Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. Mountain. And today I'm going to talk to you about a simple concept that seems to be lost on a lot of people, uh, especially the beginners, uh, but a lot of intermediates as well. And, and people who have been training for a while seem to misunderstand this concept greatly. And that is that you should always pay attention to the joint angles when you're doing an exercise instead of the positioning of the bar. For example, a lot of people will look at where the bar is in relationship to your chest and automatically assume that that correlates to the joint angle that they're looking for in order to feel the optimal stretch or optimal range of motion. And of course, I've helped you guys sidestep this entire process because if you pay attention to where you're feeling the forces, that will ultimately tell you the truth anyway. In the long run, that's gonna tell you the truth about how far you should be going in uh, individual movement or not. But I just wanna show something to you with bench pressing. And it's something that I see with guys at the gym and these sometimes are the same guys that will make fun of me for <laughs> bench pressing and not touching my chest. So today I will touch my chest with the bar and you will see something that I'm doing. Okay, so, so for example, right here, I'm going to take you right through this. Just, just watch me here. Watch me here. So if I have my hands a little narrower and I bring the bar down to my chest, what will happen is I have to extend farther down in the shoulder joint. I notice that my shoulder has to bend more. But if I do something as simple as just widen up my grip, still, you know, make sure that I'm using my front delts as well as my chest because I want to protect those, those pec tendons. But when I come down, I don't have to come down as low in order to touch my chest with the bar. So that begs the question, which form is right? the form in which you can touch your chest with the bar or the form that feels right to you. Now, any of you who have been here for a while will know the answer to that. The form that is feeling right to you, meaning taking the most amount of stress off the actual insertion points of the tendons and putting the stress on the muscle belly, whichever technique that is between these two ways of doing something is the right way. It's not about whether you can touch your chest with the bar or not. Now, I have done lots of experiments with this and sometimes I'll do a wider grip, sometimes I'll do a narrower grip. And I do recommend that you change your grips from time to time just to, I don't know, uh, just feel yourself through the process and see what adjustments you need to make. And if you stick too much to just one way of doing something, sometimes you might be missing out on some extra results. That's what I've found. I've found that sometimes by making small adjustments and variations of my exercises, I can start to stimulate other areas that maybe I didn't get a chance to stimulate before. So that's something to consider with any exercise that you're doing. Sometimes varying up the way you do it can yield some interesting results and some discoveries. But the truth is, is that even though I can touch my chest with the bar with one form of grip, it doesn't mean that I'm actually stretching the joint more because the positioning of my body is what's creating the ability to stretch more, but I'm not forcing myself into a different way of, of moving which creates more of a stretch in certain areas. So you have to take this into account. I mean, another classic example of this is the deadlift. 
If you see somebody do sumo deadlift as opposed to standard deadlift, you can see that there is a lot less range of motion with the sumo deadlift. It's, it's not even really the same movement if you really break it down. There's a lot of different muscles involved and different ways of lifting the weight. And some people say it's cheating when it comes down to the standard deadlift. But the reason why I'm highlighting this isn't about whether something's easier or harder. It's about finding the right way for yourself and breaking free of this whole paradigm of you have to do it this way or have to do it that way. So always remember, keep the stress on the muscle belly as much as you can. There's always going to be some stress on the joints. I'm not saying that the joints are always getting away scot-free. But what I am saying is that if you can keep as much stress on the areas which keep you from getting injured, uh, I think that you're going to be doing much better. So this is something that came to me intuitively. I was always intuitively trying to say, hey, where do I feel the stress? And if I feel the stress in a weird way on the joints or tendons, or it felt like something doesn't feel quite right, you know, you can feel when something's going to snap or break, right? If, if your exercise is making you feel like that, it's a surefire sign that you're going to get injured if you don't change the range of motion or change the technique or the positioning of some sort. So, you know, play around with that. So yeah, this is just a quick video. I, I just wanted to kind of make this uh, more obvious to you guys that it's not about where the bar is. It's about the angles of the joints. And, and that's really what you want to pay attention to. And yes, you can go too extreme in the angle of the joint and you want to avoid that when it comes down to putting undue stress on the, on the actual labrum or the tendons or the ligaments in that area. And I think in the long run, you're going to get a lot more results from this because you're using the body efficiently instead of constantly on the verge of breaking it. Mountain. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helps you out in your training. And if you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com. And thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Peace.